Amen. Amen. A warm and special greetings to the incredible Apostle and Prophet um, Stella, whom we truly love and honor. And thank you so much for this opportunity and this incredible conference. And greetings to all the pastors and leaders who are here this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you please just turn to your neighbor if you can and just find something lovely about them. Some may say a shoe, some may say a When we look at the stats in our country, uh, close to 65% youth unemployment, and in fact last year was more shocking, close to 60% of teenage pregnancies. Yeah. And when we zoom into such stats, over and above being said, scripture says, I think Bishop quoted it yesterday, Nehemiah sat down and mourned and wept and cried. But after he mourned, he cried, he then moved to action. And I think oftentimes the question we ask is, what is the church doing? Mm. And I love what uh, Pastor Stella said, is all which we are the church. Mm. Yes. Because it's easy to shift the responsibility to the church and the yeet is on. Mm. And that's really part of what we want to talk to this morning in terms of how can we reach this generation. Yeah. So part of the topics we're going to cover in our presentation, we'll look at the generation overview, the different generations that we have, we'll look at our role in helping this generation form character. We'll look at some of the questions and fears uh, that this generation or youth face. And we'll look at how best we can create growth environments for youth. And we'll then zoom into practical strategies and challenges as to how rather to create strategies to have effective youth ministries. I think one of the key things um, that we need to learn as leaders within understanding our role in building effective youth strategies is number one, we need to be able to know the people that we are leading. Because it's hard to lead someone on a man's. You, Isaiah 43 verse 18 says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. And I love the fact that he called for look what dad. And I know oftentimes we use it to move the crest with the message of what dad again to love us of Velobusha. But it also speaks to strategy and being able to understand that certain means and certain things we used to do no longer serve the purpose today. Yeah. And not to put it wrong, but we need to understand. In fact, if we, there's an adage that says for every uh, New mouse trap. For every new mouse, there's a new trap. Even when I'm not going to do a you hear a text, and I'm not going to say that I was a seven years. People are taking a text, we find a part 20 is there. In fact, they nibble on the sides, and we totally cheese by Lumina, but still, there's no rat in the trap. And it's true even within the generation of youth that we are leading within the church. Because if we're going to try to reach the Nama strategy work dollar, chances are we won't be effective. Yes. And, and, and this becomes very, very, very key because part of us doing this, and we look at three examples from scripture. And the first one is Moses. The word of God speaks of Joshua, uh, chapter 1, verse uh, 1 to 3. It says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant. And there are just three principles I want to quickly look at Moses and how he raised up Joshua as the next generation. The one of course says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan. And I know oftentimes we learn in chapter 1 and look at Joshua arising, but oh, Joshua Lona is not arising from the sky. This Joshua has been prepared for this moment. Yes. Exodus 13, verse 13 and 14, little Bible, and Joshua the son of Nun would not depart from the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Moses would be in the tabernacle and God would conversate with Moses concerning the generation now, but Joshua would be there to eavesdrop conversation. Mm -hmm. 
Hallelujah. Not yet in the spotlight, but is in the vicinity of the presence of God. Wow. Yes, sir. Yes. And I think yes, that becomes sir. very important within introducing this generation to the presence of God. Yes. Yes. Because really, it's hard to cause a mountain when we're about to sign you. Yes, sir. That's it's a bit unfair to want to rebuke someone and yeah. So Moses had to first introduce Joshua to the presence of God. Number two, he also sent Joshua as a spy. The word of God says before Joshua is going over the Jordan, he was sent with the twelve to go and see, oh, how's the land coming with grace? And out of the twelve, only two came back, Joshua and Caleb. And I'm citing this to speak to how it was easier for him to lead them to a place where he went as a same man. Amen. Nothing in him was saying, I'm actually going to be the one who's going to actually cause them to enter into Canaan. Mm-hmm. But the exposure that he had better positioned him to say, guys, I've been there. The land yeah. is flowing with milk and honey. Yeah. Are we together, Yes. Yeah. And then thirdly, Another thing that Moses did for Joshua, we sort of chapter 32, verse 11 to 14. The word of God says they're coming from the mountain. And what I love is the word of God says they were elders. However, with Joshua, Aaron and the other guys were in camp, but Joshua, scripture says, Moses would actually go with Joshua to the mountain and encounter God, and Joshua is there. He's in the cloud with Moses, scripture says. But what I love, little people, when they came down, Umama figure there's a noise in the camp. And Joshua is like, hey, uh, uh, it's like war. There's a cry of war in the camp. And Moses says, Joshua, whoa, but man. You can hear the sound, but you're hearing the wrong sound. Mm-hmm. It's actually a, a celebration and singing. Because one of the key things Moses needs to do to help Joshua is, Joshua can hear the sound. Yeah, but Joshua can't descend the difference within the sound. And we have a lot of young people, ourselves included, that are running with the sound, but to are see or the sound in many ways. So part of how we prepare this generation is to give them wisdom to descend different. Yes. How do you descend different? Extremely important. Are we together, my friend? Number two, another example in scripture, and I'm just laying a foundation. We'll get to the specifics now, but this is very important. We learn of Umamaga Samuel. The word of God said Samuel grew up in the temple. Scripture says, number one, he slept next to the ark. Which comes back to the importance of teaching young people the presence of God. Because La Ulele corner will inform who to honor. Yeah. Joseph, who will be you will see heavens which are open and a ladder, angels ascending and descending. But if you're sleeping anywhere, the rock being Christ, of course, you will begin to see things in your echo. And that's why, because everything that's not submitted to God, the enemy has access to it. And that's why, um, if the gifts within the generation, as was mentioned this all, there's a lot of young people who are anointed, they've got dreams, they've got amakupo, and if these are not submitted to the presence of God, who will look by your twas? Yes. 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 And we've not taught them what to do yeah. with these dreams. Yes. Yes. So Samuel, you are sleeping next to the presence of God. And another key thing, Samuel, which is very important, which is the role of the mother now, which is the older generation, and we'll get to that now, is to, little by little, every year her mother would become to a linen effort. Yeah. And what I love is every year, because another danger is to go to Samuel as a seven or five old to get in Google, year one year old. He's oh. serving, but he looks funny. Funny three quarter, then be muda. Who called our temple? What was it irrelevant? Young people, they are serving in church, but externally in the world and there's nations or the community, they are irrelevant because of him. We might go we don't have a generation that's too many people. And two things that language does. One, it preserves your character, and we'll get to that. Because next to the temple, the sons of Ue, Luhof, and Ophinias, they are playing around. Because even within church, but they have a young pastor, youth, what to at least someone against my camp, or whatever, but I have my camp is a disaster. Oh, yeah. And I get about hope in about Phineas, but what about about Samuel? Oh, yes. Who are here for the genuine thing? Yes. Yeah. Are we going to compromise Samuel because of hope in Phineas? Yeah. Because it's easy to just 
one blanket approach and say, since you have value on Zabanda, I want to have a fire food. What about Nabana food? So the government was able to preserve him in the midst of friends who were playing in the presence of God. Oto Jesus bafu ni bage salame Jerusalem ni zen party sway. One of the key things that we'll get now to strategy is our generation needs the power of Holy Spirit. Yes. We can't. We can't live holy lives. We can't live lives that honor and glorify God and lives of impact without Holy Spirit. Yes. We need to create environments within churches where young people encounter the genuine Holy Spirit. Where young people are able to speak in tongues, fully baptized in the Holy Spirit, driving their car, living in their mansions, proper business people, but they are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And that becomes important for us Samuel growing up next to the presence of God. Is it amen? Amen. And those are the two key things within scripture that are very, very important for us. Mm. To be able to lay this firm foundation. Mm. Amen. Amen. Psalms 127. Well, Psalms 127, the word of God says, As arrows in the hand of a warrior, mm. so are the children of one's youth. Mm. As pastors, as leaders, we've got an, a, a, a bag filled with arrows. Mm. And, and part of our roles then as pastors and leaders Within these arrows that we have, you can either be threatened by them, yeah. or you can choose a different posture. Okay. And understand, Ruti, without this bow, this arrow ain't going nowhere. Yeah. So I will be this bow, but over and above creating a bow, which is an environment for them, I will be the person who pulls. Yeah. I'm the one who's going to begin to place a demand on their calling, a demand on their anointing, a demand on their character, a demand on their growth. Because can anything good come out of um, uh, Nazareth? I think Nathaniel asked. Mm -hmm. Not to put is there anything good. There is something good. Because I think that's the question. Can anything good come out of Abandabash? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's not even a question of what is there anything good. It called. But the question is can it come out? Mm -hmm. And that's our role as pastors and leaders to see the good and bring it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three things. Number one, your role as a leader or pastor to this next generation is to sharpen the arrow. Scripture says we are arrows. So over to is to sharpen these arrows. And I love Bishop the Apostle the Bola. We were recently played with a beautiful baby daughter. Uzia. This one time I was like, eh, forget saying more five. We am this day. Uzia. So we got this thing. And I'm like, hey, wait, it's like, hey. Like, no, I think she's hungry. So when she's hungry, I can't feed her because I don't have the <laughs> so that's always my excuse when I think she's hard. Until the 5 a.m. and Apostle, uh, no, no bishop was saying, hey, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the And what that did to me, it not only did it make my wife happy, it sharpened my perspective within what it means to parent. Mm. Because to me, I could have just said, hey, I'm going to go to but it began to understand which I cannot neglect my role as a parent no. with a spiritual reason. Yes. Yes. But I needed people who would sharpen this air. Oh, yeah. One of the roles that we have. Number two, we straighten the air. I'm going to go away from the air. And we are going to go away from the air. But there's just there, that curve just that will cause it to lose direction. I will shoot it there, but it will go uh, the wrong direction. And the higher you go with it being a sniper, you understand that one mistake of target to go fatigue. If you do not shoot right, we did. So there's a certain level, uh, Babu Niman always says, the sec certain levels don't give you a second chance. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a mistake we make sometimes as parents and leaders. We want to use a curative approach where we could have prevented certain things. Yeah. Yeah. And it's costlier to have to fix you had a plan and a strategy as was said that will preserve and cause them training them up in the way that they should go. Because Uma says teenage pregnancy in church, and I get that part, but there's a level where we don't need because there was no need to in the first place. So good. Straighten the arrows. We need to straighten with Yona Yo, but Natia Kobega see please. And then thirdly, we need to release the arrow. Mm. 
Joel chapter 2, which is a scripture that is being cited even in this conference, in the last days, God will pour out his spirit upon our flesh. Um, young men will see visions, old will dream dreams. Part of us releasing the arrow is being able to marry the, marry the dream and the vision. Which, yeah, we've got the dream, but we need a bit of it. Let, let's on. marry these two. Come on. And, and that's how we're going to be very effective as the church. Please say amen. Amen. So what becomes key then is being able to understand generations. So so we've got different generations. We've got um, Gen X, uh, just an overview of our generations. In fact, let's start with baby boomers. We've got uh, baby boomers are those who were born um, 1946 to 1964. Mm. Uh, <laughs> 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 Is it 6th floor, as you always say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 6th floor and above. Mm. Those are the baby boomers. These were born post-World uh, War II. Uh, baby boomers, they enjoyed... Uh, so what did baby boomers at that time? Babies were... They were just... They babies. were, yeah. There was just a lot of babies being born uh, during that time, based on history. <laughs> and then we've got Gen X. Gen X is 1965 to 1979. Mm. This is a generation known as the uh, the generation bust because their birth rate was vastly lower than the preceding generation, which is uh, my baby boomers, because they were now introducing um, uh, contraceptive and stuff like that. That's Gen X. Can I just see hands about Gen X in the room? Yay. All right. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got millennials. Millennials are those born 1980 to 1995. Do you have any millennials in the house? Yes. Come on, millennials. You really want to be there. Do you have any millennials in the house? Yes. <laughs> yes. Shame you are. The generation reaching uh, adulthood in the early 21st century, also known as Gen Y. Um, these were shaped by the um, technology revolution, where their computers, tablets, and the internet became a norm. And that's part of the millennials. Then we have Gen Z, which is the generation economy from 1996, oh, which is a whole. <laughs> 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 they put other Gen Z. They are well about Gen Z. So part of what happens then within um, all these generations, maybe just something within Gen Z, just for us to be able to understand. Uh, educational psychologists actually, when they study Gen Z, they find out to with Gen Z, uh, biologically they mature quicker. That's why you would see them, they are taller, yeah. broader. My youngest brother, Kev, is taller than all of us, bigger than all of us. So biologically they are bigger, they, are, they mature quicker. Cognitively as well, they mature quicker. E Gen Z. However, when we look at the emotional and social growth, emotionally, in fact, Gen Z is the most anxious and depressed generation ever. And there's quite a lot of factors and reasons for that, and we'll zoom into how to deal with that. Relationally or socially, it's a bit hard for them to hold down a relationship. Yes. It's a bit hard for them to show up in a friendship genuinely. Yes. And that's part of the strategies we will talk to as the church to be able to wow. begin to strengthen them wow. emotionally and socially. Because yeah. there's a huge gap. Mm -hmm. Biologically, they are smart. You know, five, three, four, they're able to do more with their gadget than you own that. Mm -hmm. Because cognitively, and you don't even know who taught them, they're just smart like that. Who's mm here? -hmm. She's like seven, eight months. Who should be saved? I was like, how? Yeah. We're holding the phone, she's okay, what was a mistake, she pressed, but she's so aware <laughs> of the phone. Literally, my colleague didn't told she's the one who's dancing, we're like, see. <laughs> and every time I video call, she smiles, and I'm like, automatically they are developing quicker and faster. Mm -hmm. But socially and emotionally, they are lagging behind. Yeah. And that's an opportunity for us as the church, mm -hmm. which is what we will talk to. Uh, me, yeah. I'm not sure if you do have DJ at the back. Part of what forms a generation is music. It's music. I just want to go through just maybe three or four generational songs. And I want you to begin to remember. <laughs> 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 Maybe while we, 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 we get the music, so it's not only music, but it's comprehensive values, it's senses of humor, it's fears, it's hopes, 
it's shared experiences, it's technology, it's strategy. I'm a tragedy. For example, this generation led, COVID is a life defining moment for them. Literally, for them, it's a life defining moment. For those who had apartheid, it was also a life defining moment for the generation. 9 11, for those in America, it was a life defining moment for them as well. So we've got different life defining moments which begin to shape and alter a generation. Are we together? Yeah. Even the type of music that we see, mm. it, it, even within church, yeah. there are songs, if even you look at um, the beautiful song we sang yesterday, Build Your Church, which is elevation. If you look at the tone and style of music, if you look at even his song, back then, Masako Hamasut and his song now, you're able to see the shift of generations. Yeah. Yeah. Are we together, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. So this then becomes important for us to then understand how do we zoom in and zone into a specific generation. Amen. amen. Please say amen. Amen. There's a generation that relates with that song. Yes. You even remember what was happening there. Yes. Let's go to the next song. I don't know the guys there. Please give me the last song because of time. We have Kumula Muslim. Christmas. Yeah. 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 This is technically a must step on my baby. This is a must step on my baby. This is a must step on my baby. This is a must step that you have, but the danger is being able to take something that worked 1960 mm -hmm. Ufurzo Yenza 2022 yeah. 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 and something is wrong but you know you've not adapted to the relevant strategy for this generation yeah. let's, 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 let's try to bring our plane for landing and we'll zoom into now specifics how do we do this if you look at that picture there of the iceberg on the screen you actually will begin to see, um, with the iceberg, the part above the water is actually smaller than what's beneath the water. Mm -hmm. 
And, and oftentimes we, 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 and I think Bishop Galitin said this, if the light shining upon you is greater than the light within you, yeah. the light upon you will destroy you. Yes. Mm. And, 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 and I think one of the dangers of this is, as a generation, love of face values in light. Mm. But the danger is there's really no makeup for the heart. Yeah. There's no cologne yeah. for the heart. Yeah. Because publicly, it seems like we have it together as a generation, but there's a lot that's beneath the surface. Yeah. That's why you look at the suicide rates and all these things that are happening. And that's where I really want us to begin to zone into and see how best we can deal with that part. And there are four parts of this. If you look at the next slide of the ship, it's Titanic in 1912. When they called the operator and said, watch, ahead of you there's an iceberg. And he said, even God can't sink this ship. Yeah. And the fourth time, the fifth time, not the last time they heard of him, after that they crashed and they were dead. Yeah. And that's the thing about us, Abanda Bash. Baba scared of telling me which I see that. It's only until later when we've crashed, we actually see the disaster which I shouldn't have. I can have to do a whole bit. That's what we have in the and there are four things then within this which are very key. Within strategy of dealing with helping this generation to form a godly character. Mm -hmm. If you look at the slide there of the chess board, you actually begin to see there is a checkers and a chess. With young people, you can't treat them as a checkers or umrabara. Mm -hmm. Umrabara, but every piece is the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But with chess, it's mm -hmm. different. Each piece on the board is unique. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's the strength of each piece on the board. Yeah. If your approach to young people is going to be gen gen generic, yeah. you're not going to be able to maximize the unique abilities God has put in each yeah. and every young person under your leadership. I have anointed Aloya Heaven, Basile, with Achise and Wato. And God says, Moses, you at the mountain. Yes, I'm giving you the blueprint of the tabernacle. But there are artisans of anointed. Yeah. Anyone want to take this artisan and tell them to pack chairs? Yeah. 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 Under I'm underutilizing them. Yeah. And that's why ESCOM and other industries will begin to utilize what you are not utilizing in the church. Yeah. Because as church, we're supposed to be not only the beneficiaries, but we are part of sharpening these gifts that we use in the world, which are great, but they are also meant to serve in the local house of God. Yes. So once you begin to use them then as these pieces, a chess puzzle, you're then able to know, oh, la am the queen. Oh, a queen protecting king. I'm the king, but my movement is a bit restricted. But I've got people around me who protect me. Amen. Amen. Character. Beneath the surface. Number four things as we bring it in for landing. Number one, self-discipline. We need to teach this generation to be self-disciplined. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is the ability to do what is right even if you don't feel like it. Yeah. Yeah. I think oh, Pastor Stella said this, which as leaders we can't be going on our feelings. We don't lead on our feelings. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to figure out, oh, let's teach them self-discipline. You might not feel like doing this, but it's the right thing to do. You need to do it. Yes. And it will also help them to show up better in 17, yes. to show up better within their careers because they are self-disciplined. Yeah. Number two, core values. These are principles that they live by that enable them to take a moral stance. Mm -hmm. One of the heartbreaking things in the body of Christ is to raise up young people in the way of God and then later they backslide and go and get the jury still out on us. But when you begin to see young people, but all of a sudden maybe they go to varsity and they take a different route. Yeah. And one of the reasons to that is because we've not taught them core values. Mm -hmm. Where they are able to take a moral stand. I might be in Cape Town, but we're kind of from the silent on this. Where they've got strong values. Number three, a sense of identity, which is a realistic self-image based on your gifts and personality. It's very important for us to discover and help the young people to find out what's your personality type. Yeah. And there are a lot of tests for this. There's the Enneagram. One of the tests I would actually encourage each parent to do, go for personality tests with your child. Mm -hmm. Two things that will happen. One, it will help you parent better. Yeah. Yeah. Because as it is, you will generally, there's a certain, it's a personality type. It's a chess. It's a different piece on the same board game, but it's a different piece. Yeah. But when you put it in night, 
Tadukul kul mesu kuch abe i. Shari phone i pisho. Yeah. You are limiting their potential. Can't you? Once you do these personality tests, you're able to parent and show up better. What are their gifts? Besa kubwa kama tu mtu bamba tete sonto ya nubayo msebenzi za wabu kwenye kifte besa my home. Thirdly, emotional, fourthly rather, emotional security, which is the capacity to be emotionally stable and consistent. Yeah, what emotional intelligence is very key with this generation. Yes. We, within our programs, we need to embed emotional intelligence. We need to. IQ is good and proper. It helps you a lot within a uh, school way. I wanna create R to grade twelve. A bit of university IQ sets you apart, top ten tax learner. Mm -hmm. But over time, you begin to see we had a lot of tax learners, but years later they're doing nothing at the level of their taxness at school mm -hmm. because they had IQ but no EQ. Yeah. Yeah. IQ is great in the world of school, but EQ in the world of work is very key. It's a greater yeah. predictor of success yeah. than your IQ. Yeah. So within church, we need to be able to help young people raise their EQ. That's why you would raise up a child that's not wrong. Because EQ has not been developed. When it comes to a relationship, why is it a mistake? Now it's too big of a mistake to make. Like no baby, we are not like you are but oh, for me, ja, oh, so sad. EQ. Yeah. Just that part. EQ. We need to weave it into our programs and offerings as a church. Amen. Right. Let's look at the questions and fears that this generation has. There are three big questions this generation is asking, and the first one is identity. Who am I? They want to know who to move on. That's why we call it peer pressure. But every time they find themselves in different contexts, they are going leaning towards this question of who am I? Yeah. And if we don't tell them who they are, the world will tell them who they are. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Number two, belonging. One of the things that young people need is a sense of belonging. Mm. Wow. They need to know I belong to this community. I am known. Young people want to be known. Part of the great resignation is because over and above people working for money, they want to work for something that makes a difference. Yeah, significance. significance. They want to know I'm part of a youth gateway church. Mm -hmm. And we are making an impact and a difference in the city. Wow. That's what will keep them coming to our services because it's beyond just the service. But we are difference makers. Wow. Amen. Three purposes. They're asking themselves the question of purpose. Who am I, number one? Where do I fit, number two? Mm. Number three, what difference can I make? Mm. What's the thing? They want to make a difference, they really do. They asked them, Manjo, which but Baba Kuka was visiting someone recently, and I was thinking Valentine, and they're busy knocking on the house, and they're like, no, we just wanted to give you cupcakes to celebrate love. Wow. It's young people just going around, they're not selling them, they're just making a difference. What was it about my cupcake? <laughs> and to them, that's a significant thing. Yes. Because they want to make a difference. Yes. They want to make a difference. So learning to listen, listen to these questions can unlock a generation. Yes. As leaders, we need to create a growth environment. I'll rush through this. Number one, others are ahead of you. We need to create environments of growth. When young people are part of your youth services, they need to know me cool mm. I'm not just wasting my time. There's quite a lot of things to do on Netflix than going to a boarding service. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm just talking for the youth. You <laughs> hear <laughs> <laughs> I said if you're offended, I'm sorry. But <laughs> man. Because they can do a lot of other things than just sitting here and being part of a boarding service. Mm. They need to know if I'm going to be part of that service, I'm going to grow. Oh. Something will be said to me that will stretch me. Yeah. 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 You are continually growing and being challenged. That's a growth environment. Mm -hmm. Number three, focus is forward. Mm -hmm. But we are forgetting the things that are behind, pressing forward to the things that lie ahead. Mm -hmm. Four, the atmosphere is affirming, yeah. which is part of culture. Mm. Because culture is a combination of what you create and what you tolerate. Yes. Oh. When we're able to create, tolerate and create. Yeah. There are certain things we want to tolerate within our youth groups. 
But beyond what you're not tolerating, this is what we are creating. Because yeah. we are good at not tolerating, but we're not creating anything. Yeah. Yeah. The atmosphere is affirming. Uh-huh. Number five, youth are often out of their comfort zone because that's only the only way they grow. Mm-hmm. Youth are excited to attend services. Failure is not their enemy. Others are growing. They desire change. Mm-hmm. Growth is modeled and expected. Yeah. Like, but my abode would talk cool one. And we are expecting this growth. Yeah. We're together, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So challenges to successful youth ministry. Young people I spoke to this wrestle with anxiety more than ever. There's a generation gap. I was recently doing something for one of the schools and the principal was welcoming us. And I was looking at this principal with all due respect. I'm like, he's old. <laughs> and I'm looking at the ch- like, not even cool, it's like a great grandparent to <laughs> honestly speaking. It was a primary school and he's busy talking and they're not connecting at all. No. <laughs> and it grieved my heart to like no. Wow. It becomes very important for us to close the church. And not that we say, but self-awareness becomes important. Self-awareness. Self-awareness. Because when you are self-aware, they they won't be threatened. There will be no need to role play with others. Programs need to be appealing. Transportation and consistency in services. That's another thing is that I ain't given a transport none none. And just a quick one here, as older youth or young adults, let's adopt these young people. Yeah. If there's a youth service, go there. No more participate, just hang around. Amen. So that after service, that's how you begin to influence them. Yeah. But you have to leave them with a Yeah, that's right. The more back up, the more you can have a conversation with them. So that Baba Ninkinga, you are the first person they think of. Yeah. Yeah. So make yourself available. Young adults, one of the things we need to do is to mentor this generation. Yeah. Do to others what they did to you. Yeah. Be a Barnabas to that soul. Yeah. It's very important. Oh, Amen. Let's be those role models. Check in with young people. Ask them what's making you feel stressed or anxious these days. How are you managing your feelings? Incorporate uh, SPL programs, I spoke of that. Have mental health conversations, that's a big one. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. Build intergenerational connections in the church. Mm. Get young people to serve. One of the things that get young people to is to serve. Yeah. Get them to serve, to own it. Yes, you'd be shocked at the commitment they have. Yeah. When I saw the time, I was so cool. Yeah. <laughs> get them to serve. Yeah. Have tight discipleship process. For young people, mm-hmm. teach them doctrine. Yeah. Very important. Yes. Teach them doctrine. Yes. Be very intentional about teaching them the elementary principles of Christ. Yes. Yes. Teach them doctrine. You know, you could serve this prayer, but within the service, teach them doctrine. Yes. It's very important. So Create environments for them to encounter the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let me park here because of time. Two minutes for or oh, three minutes for yeah, questions, questions if we do have. Come on, guys. Wow. You. Yes. Thank you so much for the enlightening, empowering um, presentation. I think as the previous uh, one of the, um, the gentlemen that side said, you know, this is deliverance. We are just receiving and we trust in God to go home and implement. I just want to make a comment just before you highlighted some few points towards the end. I think when one of our daughters said to my husband one Sunday morning as he was dressing up in his suit and his ties and all the formal clothes, and he said, Daddy, you are irrelevant to us. You are not making sense. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we did not take that well at that moment because we felt, and he said, and I said to my daughter, what would you like your daddy to wear? And he took out a, sne- um, a skinny jean, a t-shirt, and, a, and some sneakers. And he said, I think you must dress like this so that we can hear you. Yeah. 
And I mean, I just want to, to just, it's a comment that also I feel that we need to, also as pastors, as you spoke about, as we adapt to the new generation, I looked at my apostles how he dressed, and I think it's making sense Amen. To, to, to all of us. So I, 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 the question I want to ask is that we are moving to a time where also we are allowing our young people to start having their um, um, meetings and engaging the community. But then how do we group in other young people who are not believers mm. and um, enforce the teaching or, other, or, or other, put in the teachings that will draw them closer except using activities, like currently we have quite a lot of activities, and I think that's a pool that brings them to the church. But then the sustaining to keep them in the church so that they can grow and not go back to the world. Thank you so much. That's a brilliant question. Maybe two things. Um, thank you for that example, which comment about being appealing or relevant to the dinner. And not, not too extreme, but just making that effort it goes a long way. How do we, I think it's John Wesley who said, set a man on fire and people will drive all over to come see him burn. <laughs> what happens is if your young people are on fire and you've created, we forget the land of Ubo, the young people in the community will have no choice but to be attracted. Once you've got sober young people, ever right, about it, about hands up. Yeah. Others will come because they see a beautiful yeah. yeah. But over and above the burning tree that they saw, there's something inside that will pull them in. Yeah. I think if we can intentionally create that in our young people, we're good to go. Yeah. Then number two, sorry, 2.1.2, Holy Spirit. He's the one who will keep... Am I might, yes. A lot of creativity comes with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now, once you are prayed up as a youth leader, he will tell you how to go. Yeah. You've never been this way before, Joshua. Yeah. Yeah. Follow the presence of God. Yeah. Sometimes he will tell you to your figure, not do a Bible study, this man. Mm-hmm. So the Holy Spirit, his role is invaluable in yeah. helping us feel sustainable. Wow. Wow. Yeah. To that it's important I want you to speak into this statement it's important for us to create encounters because the generation Z are looking for an experience people are, are going to uh, festivals they are going to nightclubs because they are looking for experience they want to experience something so the Holy Spirit and the encounters youth needs to be amazing. That's very key. I, I think within the encounters of the Holy Spirit, as you say, one of the things for those who've been around the club world, you begin when you enter into that world, I'm a light to music work on. No puza utu Paul nina dawa yuai. Yeah. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. Which then says what the wine does to a natural person giving them an experience. Holy Spirit can do that and better. Yes. Wow. So young people tend to lean to wine because there is no wine that will in way. And once they can have an encounter deeply with the Holy Spirit, this thing was so honey like sip and no puza. I never see before because most of the older generation, you encountered God, the things I used to do, I do them no more. You didn't need a lot of counseling, but you stood on the altar, the power of the Holy Spirit hit you, and you never looked back ever again. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit is still that powerful. Mm-hmm. Once we can intentionally within our services create environments where let's fast together, let's pray, let's, let's charge up the atmosphere, yeah. let's get the intercessors to come and begin to walk around before the service starts. Yeah. And guys, today the service is just Holy Spirit. Yeah. We begin to tell them who the Holy Spirit is. We tell them the power of baptism, of speaking in tongues, yeah. and we allow Holy Spirit to do what it does best. Yeah. That marks a generation. Master Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As you know, the SEO net it deals with a lot of you. Are you okay? Okay, can I speak? Oh am I audible? Yes. Um 
So I've been with ministry. Si Talabadu Abani Abani Ama lesbians and gays. So how do we deal with that? Because it's a new environment. We ask um, our older generation, but that method doesn't work. So how do we deal with new believers and their identity they've already um, been given or came with the So how do we deal with that? Thank you so much. That's a great question, which I think is relevant for the generation we need. Because it's quite a lot of... <laughs> There's quite a lot I can say. I'll just maybe, I'll just maybe be an overview. We'll talk maybe during lunch. But I think one of the best things, one, beyond accommodating them, is the word of God is able. I always use an example, no peggy papa, not to pack it up, sell his cork and I put it. What you do, tell a man that she said, he laughed. Then you wash the other dishes. And then over time, you take it. What happens to his cork? And all of us in a caucus now, lesbian, pusa, smoking, all these different things. Young people have a lot of different cockles, just theirs are more protruded and they're not apologetic about it. But water in scripture represents the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Once young people are exposed to the word of God on a continuous basis and the power of Holy Spirit, that's a call for it's just a matter of time. Yeah. 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 Also, I'm not sure, I'm seeing a few hands. Do I still have a mission under your I just time uh, up? Can, can, we, can we do some of the questions maybe after lunch? Uh, yeah, I think after lunch. Lunch time. Thank you. Man. Thank <laughs> you.